Yamaha 9.9 right here. It's got some salt buildup on here, so I'm gonna spray it down on the outside. But what I'm doing is building, uh, I'm gonna build a system here so that I can flush these out overnight. I can run this pump for like 20 hours if I want to, run it overnight, 24 hours and it's gonna clean out the inside and deep inside of these heads because I do run through salt water and when you just use this regular rinse down here, it's not enough pressure to really get all that buildup out and you'll end up with some of these um, spots where your water comes out. It's not gonna come out as fast as it should. I've got four, three of them on here, two down here and one up here and one of these is not working. So it caused my alarm to come on even though I flush every time I go out and salt and run it in fresh water. So none of that matters. This stuff is so corrosive. I just clean these off before I put it away. And you see how this stuff builds up really quick. So we gotta clean all that stuff off with a brush. Yeah. Try and keep my stuff working really good. Sorry, it's a 93. Uh, uh, one quarter inch pump. <coughs> Sorry, one tenth horsepower, six gallons per minute. Should be plenty. This is the tote that I got here. It's a 40 gallon, the five gallon bucket, but this is wide enough and long enough to catch the water coming off of it and recycle it. Get one with wheels and a handle so you can easily bring it out. You won't hesitate to do your engine. With horsepower, six gallons per minute should be plenty. As long as it's got pressure enough to have this full of water when it's squirting out and I can pop these out. I'm gonna take the thermostats out so that it can flow and I'll soak those in the cleaner. Okay guys, I'm getting excited. Another tip up, another tip up here. Okay, I've just uh, rotated everything in and made it more enclosed so I'll be able to actually spy a lid on here. I'll cut it out and the lid will go around this. It'll still be, the lid will be open here of course and closed all the way up on this side and back under here. And it'll just hit again try this pump out. This is the pump we're testing first. Going to see if that works. So we're going to slide that on first. A couple in here. Okay guys, we're back out here today. We've got some salt to weigh in. This is where this one hooks up. This is the thermostats. They just need to be up here near the top and it comes down here. And this is my return. Basically, people call it the pee hole. It squirts out here, hot water. I also have two spots down here. So when I pulled these thermostats out, they look like crap. I'll show you these things even through the bag. You see all that buildup? Now this engine, I rinsed with salt away. I rinsed every time I was done in salt water and yet the thermostat still looked like this. Um, it, you just cannot do this without flushing because when you flush your motor with that, with that hose connector deal, this guy right here or that one, it does not open your thermostats. Without your thermostats opening, what happens is you're just rinsing part of that engine, not this part up top. So you can see how you're, when I rinse the engine, it would just get down to this bottom side 
but it wouldn't get to this part of those thermostats. Okay, and this is gonna put you down out in the water. That engine whistle will come on, it will start screaming that it's overheating, and it will be overheating. That won't just be I will be back soon, I'm gonna go up, and we've got our system set up here with a pump. We're gonna come back and test this pump, but first I'm gonna go get two brand new thermostats and new hoses. You see how these hoses are cracking in here? The last thing you want is to have this thing on a hot July day be out in the water, you put brand new thermostats in, flush your engine, great cooling system, and have a hose break, which could lead to a blown motor. Again, super important, cheap. All right, kids, we're back. We're gonna tilt our motor up. We've got our bin here. We've got the boat set where I can go pretty close to the bottom of this bin which is important to catch all my water and recycle it correctly. I don't want to lose a bunch of this uh, water or cleaners, I should say. It's pretty expensive. So we're going to make sure this climbs right back down in there, right to the very bottom. You can see how my drain pump is sitting nice and flat on the bottom in here. I'm gonna move it towards this back corner because the water is gonna to wanna to come back this direction a little bit more. So we'll move it back over this way a little bit. Like this, there we go. We're sitting in the low spot, which is really important. And of course this pump. You see this mess that I got going here? This is just for putting it away. So now we're gonna take it out and turn it around. Now that it's turned around on here, you can just turn and adjust your pump down here. Just like that. So it's still sitting nice and flat. That's what's cool about these pumps is they you can just turn that and get it flat, trim this into the, the distance you need. Here's your plug in. Okay, and this is your inlet going in. We've already put this on. And we've made sure that we've got enough line here that this is short enough that we're not taking up um, all the pressure from this pump. You don't want it too long. and You don't want it too short or it's gonna wanna kink. So we have it going just like this and we're gonna take this off and then prime it in here. So we got this going down in there. We could literally turn this pump on. It's gonna suck out of here. comes this way into the motor here, which is the flush. And then it's gonna cycle through. We're gonna put our, we're gonna put our caps back on here, our covers without the thermostats because they will not open with this cold water. We're gonna run it really clean like that. And then we're gonna turn around and put brand new hoses on since these are cracking and throw in brand new thermostats and seals. Meanwhile, we are gonna do a test to get this out in the open here. This is the back side of my thermostat. Back measurements here, we're going two gallons to one gallon, a two to one ratio. And you're not tightening these down just snug. You do not have to go real tight, stuff is aluminum. And so you don't need to Real big heavy wrench as we'll see in a minute. So we're tightened back up here, 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 and here without thermostats. Or your hot water drain hole, it's basically an extra layover here. Shoots out here to let you know the water is pumping through your system. That is coming through here and back into our closed loop system. We've got one gallon of rid lime, two gallons of water. We have this at a little bit of an angle and your pump is down and trimmed your line down into this lower corner here. You can see the splitting I have, the splitter right there I have in the middle of the line that splits this and shortens that to the proper distance for this pump. Now we have this pump going in. It's gonna pump it through the entire system and then back out into the bin and back up. But we have to prime this pump, so let's do that and then we can get started. What we're gonna do is pop this thing off here Set it down. We'll just pop that off of there. Just pulled it right out. Hold this hose up in the air above your pump 
and fill this line up. This is gonna go in and fill that pump or that pump's got a plastic impeller that needs to stay lubricated or it will burn up. So do not run your pumps without water in them. Kind of like the water pump impeller in the bottom of this boat uh, motor. It's the same thing in that engine, that electric motor right there. Uh, let's see if that's going to be enough. We're going to plug it in and see if I got enough in there to get it started. And it looks like we're golden. You can see that water pumping through here. Yep, you can see it coming out of the... See it starting to come out of where the water comes in. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to crack this upper thermostat here. And make sure that water is getting all the way up to the top of the cylinder. Make sure it's not just cycling the bottom. If that pump's not strong enough, it won't get up here. And I got water starting to drip. Sweet. Let's just make sure it's a good steady stream. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that. Now, because I have this thing set up, this water is just gonna go right out of the bottom of this, mo uh, out of the motor case. Uh, it's, that's so much water uh, blowing out of here, it's trying to push this thing off. So that pump is good for you guys. 1.3 pH level. So if you cycle it through your motor and you check that when you're done and it's at a 2.3 or 2.5 or 3.5, it's done. That product's no longer cleaning and if it's when you're done, if it's at 3.5, then you still have some cleaning to do. You need to throw it out and do it again. So hopefully when we're done rinsing this, it's still at 1.5 or 3 or 6 or something like that. And then we know that we've completely cleaned out the inside of that engine. I'm getting excited. Another tip up, another tip up here. Okay, I've just uh, rotated everything in and made it more enclosed. So